by people like you <laughs> and by having free college it's awesome i'm not gonna have to have this weight of debt hanging over my shoulder it's so nice to be able to not have to worry about that burden so yeah set you up for success Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Northern Light Health, encouraging Mainers to ask themselves, how are you? Really? Here we go. Here then we go. Back with us okay. at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you? Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. Deadriver.com. Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. From the Augusta Civic Center, it's the MPA Girls Class D State Championship, presented by Ware Butler, between the Southern Aroostook Warriors and the Valley Cavaliers. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our state's capital as we get set for state championship basketball on the stations of Maine Public Television. It's the Class D Girls State Finals as the Southern Aroostook Warriors take on the home team, the Valley Cavaliers. I'm Toby Nelson, joined by Karen Magnuson on the broadcast, and we're glad you're here for state championship coverage. And Karen, uh, four gold balls will be handed out here in, in Augusta this afternoon. It's a great day for basketball. Oh, and you can tell it's starting to fill up. People are excited. You can feel the energy. The band's going, so it should be a fun day. We're looking forward to high school basketball. The Southern Aroostook Warriors coming in here with just one loss in the season. They're the perennial favorites in Class D. Until you beat them, they're going to be the king, right? Right. I mean, they come back with a lot of experience, and coming back as reigning champs, they're going to be tough to play against. And uh, I bet Valley's excited for the opportunity. That's exactly right. We talk about a team of Valley with just no losses. They're undefeated on the season. One loss for Southern Aroostook. Their head coach is Cliff Urquhart, and Jim Baines is standing by with him right now. Jim? Place we are uh, talking to each other in a pregame here, but uh, always a fun place to be. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great atmosphere here in Augusta. All right. Let's just uh, talk very quickly about um, about Bingham. Uh, you scouted him. You've been used to um, rolling through competition this year. You're not going to see that today, you think? No, they've got a lot of weapons. Um, you know, if, if you concentrate on the inside kids, the outside kids are going to hit shots, vice versa. Um, really tough to leave anybody on this team, and uh, they, we're going to have our hands full. Sure. Right. Any players in particular you're worried about? I really like the Mills girl. I mean, they've got three really good guards, but the Mills girl uh, keeps me at night, keeps me up at night. So. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, good luck today. Yep. Back to you. Okay, Jim, thanks very much. So on the flip side of things, uh, Karen, we're starting to talk about Valley. They come in here unbeaten on the season, a little younger, youth on their side, but Coach Gordon Hartwell has them playing some really good basketball. Yeah, you, you know, when you have different age groups coming together and they have an eighth grader that starts you know the whole season is about getting them to gel and get better and better and better obviously they've done that and you can see from their scores that they've just they've competed very well against who they've gone up against they ran through the southern main tournament picked up wins uh, over telstar greenville and wayne fleet we'll talk about those here in just a moment before that though we want to get the point of view from their head coach gordon hartwell and he's standing by with jim baines jim well, Charlie, well, you got uh, two games for Bingham here today. Here, we're going to take care of yours first. A great atmosphere here for Bingham. Yeah, yeah, actually, the crowd's coming out good, which is the way it should be for this type of thing. And uh, we're ready to go, and I think the crowd certainly will be, too. Okay, scouting Southern Aroostook. Now, just like Southern Aroostook, they've been kind of rolling through the competition, as you have. Not going to happen today for either team, right? Uh, no, I expect a competitive game. They've got some really, really good players. They've got... Tremendous experience being in this game, um, but you know we're we're going to come and we're going to go at them and do what we do, and we're not changing really anything. And you know, hopefully that'll be enough. All right, good luck today. Thank you very much. Okay, back to you. Here's that gold ball right now. Tell us how we got there, Karen. Yeah, so looking at the road to the golds, you've got Southern Aroostook. They're 17 and one on the season, going up against Valley, 18 and 0. Very similar. Looking at their points per game, you know, within a point of each other, and then points against. 
you got Valley with that edge, but when it comes to a game like this, it's gonna be an even game, and it's whoever's gonna get what they want in this game, whether it's pace, whether it's inside play, making big shots, that's what's gonna matter. Both the teams won ranks, the number one ranks in their respective divisions, the North and the South, both ran through their, their conference tournaments, so, um, we look for a good, good, good ball game here today. Yeah, looking at their regular season, you got Southern Aroostook and both Valley, who weren't really challenged that much. So this should be the best one. They're going to be challenged here today. Let's send it over to the floor, and we will get the participants in this one, the Class D State Final. And the Southern champion, the Valley Cavaliers, home team in the light uniform. Your officials are Miss Martin, Mr. Cowan, Mr. Thibodeau, score is Dave Burns, timer is Ed Beer, and on the score clock, Dave Turtleot. Before announcing the starters, we'll introduce each team member, beginning with Southern Arusta. Number four, Haley McGarry. Number five, Olivia Ellingwood. Number 21, Emma Stubbs. Number 23, Jasmine Ellingwood. Number 24, Kendall Lawler. Number 25, Alexa Hershey. Number 54, Libby Anderson. For Valley, number five, Delia Hill. Number 11, Alexa Staples. Number 12, Miranda Bean. Number 22, Serrata Wright. Number 32, Raven Clark. Number 33, Kara Bigelow. Number 42, Daisy Wright. And now for your starters. For Southern Aroostook Warriors at guard, she's a 5'3 sophomore. Number three, Hannah McGarry. At forward for Valley, a 5'10 freshman, number 24, Brianna Mills. At forward for Southern Aroostook, a 5'8 senior, number 10, Emily Landry. At forward for Valley, a 5'10 sophomore, number 21, Riley Clark. At forward for Southern Aroostook, a 5'9 sophomore, number 12, Ali Shields. At guard for Valley, a 5'8 eighth grader, number 20, Liana Hartwell. At guard for Southern Aroostook, a 5'5 senior, number 30, Madison Shields. For Valley, at guard, a 5'6 sophomore, number 10, Kirsten Bigelow. For Southern Aroostook, at guard, a 5'5 senior, number 33, Cammie Shields. At guard for Valley, a 5'6 junior, number 00, Madeline Hill. Southern Aroostook is coached by Cliff Urquhart. Valley is coached by Gordon Hartwell. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and honor our country by the playing of the national anthem for Southern Aroostook School Band. Thank you. 
pretty sure the whole town of Bingham is here if you look across <laughs> the way, Karen. <laughs> Holy smokes. The sea of blue. They've got a pretty exciting uh, two games to be a part of today. Yeah, they do. The boys will play following this one against Bangor Christian. The girls sit, get set to tip it off against Southern Aroostook. Toby Nelson, Karen Magnuson with you from the Augusta Civic Center. And we're glad you can be with us for state championship coverage here on the stations of Maine Public Television. Riley Clark to jump center for the Valley Cavaliers. And she'll go up against Allie Shields, just a sophomore. So. Warriors, no stranger to state championship competition. They've won the last two goal balls as the opening tip of this one controlled by the Valley Cavaliers. So they'll settle up in front court in the home whites today. Driving baseline, going up with a shot, no good. As Hartwell with a miss, but she's fouled and heads to the free throw line for two shots. I'll tell you, she is fun to watch. You and She's an eighth grader, and she's the first one that gets that and says, I'm attacking and making a play. First game, uh, first play of the state game. Madison, so impressive. Madison Shields call for the foul, and no question, an eighth grader on this stage, and she makes <laughs> the first free throw. <laughs> I think she, she might have done that in the last game as well, I think. She's fun to watch. Both these teams with very similar regional championship scores, 71-26, 71-27 uh, to get here. Second shot missed, rebound taken off. Emily Landry down court. Knocked away from her, McGarry now up top to Cami Shields. Shields, a thousand point scorer. She's a senior on this Southern Aroostook team. Drives down the lane, the runner off the glass and in. A great job seeing that open block and attacking it and taking what the defense gave you. Cammie Shields gives the Warriors the lead as we get our whistle and a traveling violation. The scoreboard right now says 199 to nothing. I'm pretty sure that's not correct. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody's saying anything yet, right? Well, they'll fix that, I'm sure. Is that they're working on it right now over on this side. It's They'll take the scoreboard off the screen right now, but it's... Uh, the score is two to one, so the first <laughs> Are you sure it's 197 to zero? Okay, we're getting closer. Down the lane, McGarry with the shot, no good, and she's fouled. So that'll send her to the free throw line here for two shots. You can see from this replay, great job attacking. And that's probably a good emphasis right now for them. Everything you've seen so far is get to the rim, attack, make them have to defend. Bree Mills call for the foul, that's her first. And yeah, they're still having an issue with the scoreboard right now. So uh, now it's up to 198. <laughs> <laughs> Following this game, uh, it'll be Valley and Bangor Christian. That'll be boys action. We'll have it for you here on the stations of Maine Public Television. Two to one the score right now. The Southern Aroostook Warriors with a lead over the Valley Cavaliers. 7.04 <laughs> to play in the opening quarter. They've got it back to 0-0. Zero, zero, so. In these moments, you feel a little bit for the players who are just excited to get going, and <laughs> they're sitting and waiting. Oh, can that score go up just so we can start playing again? Hey, they got it. <laughs> there one. we go. <laughs> Round of applause. Yes, uh, I'll even give them that one. <laughs> McGarry to the free throw line for two shots. 2-1, two Southern Aroostook with a lead. And the first shot here on the way around and out no good. Southern Aroostook has won gold balls in 92, 95, 18, 19, 22, and 23. That's a lot, of, a lot of hardware in the trophy case. Yeah, and then you're looking at Valley, who's fighting for their first one, right? So both teams have reasons to want to win this one, to continue it or to get your first. Yeah, Valley lost the championship in 06 and 09. They ran into Woodland. I believe those are the day. Maybe Ashley Marble playing for Woodland High School back in the 2005-06 era. I don't think she. Been uh, after? I think yeah. I think that was after because I think she was around the time that I was playing in high school. She was a great she? player. <laughs> Jeez, and even better when she went to USM, right? So That's right. she had a great career. I'm sitting next to a former Coney Ram here, so I feel like I'm in pretty good company. So. Oh, that takes me back. Second free throw, no oh, good. Nice rebound. Rebound pulled out by Shields. Actually, yeah, that's number 10, Emily Landry. Madison Shields, number 30. She's the cousin to Cami and Allie Shields. At the free throw line, Landry. It's down the lane and traveled. A pretty decent defense, interior defense anyway for Valley. Yeah, you can see Valley's going to have to figure out how do you keep them out of the paint because all three possessions getting right now to the left block, but it's all everything's to the rim right now for them. Front court, it's Kristen Bigelow. 
And now Hill dumps it down low to Clark. Up off the glass and in. Great composure on that catch. She caught it, a couple people around her. She got herself set. Nice finish. A minute and a half into the first quarter, Valley leading at 3-2 over Southern Aroostook in this Class D final. This is Shields for the Southern Aroostook Warriors. Cammy down the lane and lost the ball, goes out of bounds. Yeah, Southern Aroostook, and the thing you're watching them right now, if this is the first time you watch, you're thinking, you know, they're trying to get to the rim, get to the rim. They can shoot it, too. Both Shields um, can put up shots and are very good three-point shooters. Front court for the Cavaliers. Inside to Clark, it's blocked out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds by Madison Shields. It'll stay with Valley. It'll trigger underneath their own basket. Cavaliers 21-0 on the season. Southern Aroostook 20-1. Take a look at that one inside. Back to live action on the drive. Floater no good for Hartwell. Rebound taken out by Southern Aroostook and the Warriors running into front court. Here's Shields good to the glass. Move. What right. a good move. That's what they're good at doing, getting the ball out quick, limiting who they're going up against. Great move on that. Allie Shields first point of this final. 4-3, Southern Aroostook back on top by one. Cavaliers work it around. Clark now up top. This is a three-point try. That one by Bigelow, no good. Rebound taken down in the lane. Up off the glass and in. They are hurt well. So she just finds the basketball very well. And we get a timeout called. Timeout taken here with 5.31 to play in the quarter. We take a look at that basket. Everyone's fighting inside, and you see she just gets that loose basketball. So Hartwell gets it to go. Today's coverage is made possible by Mainers like Chris Thornton, who supported Maine Public in his estate. His generous gift helps ensure that we can continue to bring you live coverage of this annual high school basketball tournament and showcase athletic achievements across the state. For more information on how you can leave a legacy as Chris has done, give Scott a call at Maine Public, 207-330-4510. 5.18 to go in the opening quarter. Back and forth action between these two clubs. The Cavaliers with a one-point lead. Shields. Down low, Maddie Shields backs her way down, gives it to her sister Cammie, tries three around and off, can't get it to fall. And the rebound taken down by Hartwell. Nice job by Valley securing that board. Hartwell to Clark. Back to Hartwell. Tries three, that one comes up short. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be turned over. Ball goes back to Southern Rooster. Hartwell, just an eighth grader. Eighth grade. Man. I know. <laughs> and she's good. Yes. Like. Good ball movement. In the corner, three-point try missed. The Southerners are trying to open it up with the outside shot. They've missed a couple. Down the lane, Allie Shields goes up with it off the glass. Can't get it to go. Felt some contact and it's ripped away. Big rebound that time by Mills. Into the front court come the Cavaliers. It's Hill. Gives it off. Near side. Bigelow for three. Yes. Big shot. And it's all coming off of cleaning up the boards and getting out in transition. Cavaliers jump out to a four-point lead. Halfway through this first quarter from the Augusta Civic Center. Down the lane. Shot no good. Rebound ripped away by Valley. Here come the Cavaliers with Hartwell. Hartwell one on two. Right to the glass. A whistle. Player control foul. Yeah, that's... That's a tough call, but, you know, I think Valley is wanting to play with their pace. They want to get the ball out. They want to limit how much they're just sitting in a half court. Liana's trying to create in that. Second. There's Gordon Hartwell, the coach of Valley, longtime girls basketball coach. Happens to be uh, Liana's granddad, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hartwell's, that's a pretty popular pretty, name in pretty, uh, uh, Valley. <laughs> very common, very common with winning in Valley as well. In the corner, three-point try by Shields. That's off the rim, no good. Rebound taken down on the weak side by Landry. Gives it out to Cami Shields. She'll try three around and off. And a shooting cold so far for Southern Arusta. And the rebound off to Valley. Hartwell, front court with it. Gives it off to Bigelow, and now down low. Adeline Hill. Lost the handle. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Valley Cavaliers. So I think the feeling out process is probably over right now for these two clubs. They're going, going right at it. Yeah, you know, from right at the tip, they didn't seem nervous. I bet they were nervous, but they weren't playing like that. They're just, they're both settling in and doing what they need to do in order to be competitive. Hill in the lane. Nice oh, shot. Taking what the defense gives you. That was a great shot. 
Ryan Hill with the basket and Valley up to a 10 to four lead as we approach the three minute mark. Landry goes down low, the catch by McGarry and kicks it out. Three pointer, that one no good. Rebound pulled out by Valley is Madeline Hill. Hartwell with three points so far in this one. Three of her team's 10, they lead it by six. Throw line, ball knocked away as they're looking for Mills. Valley settles up in the front court. Southern Aroostook with one loss in the season. It came to Fort Kent, which is a Class C school. Whistle, ball tied up. And it was a close game. It was 49-47 was the final. They lost to Fort Kent. Checking in the ball game, Libby Anderson for Southern Aroostook. And a timeout taken. 30-second timeout call by Southern Aroostook. Warriors take the timeout. And just want to kind of get some things to talk about at this point. Yeah, I think for Southern Aroostook, they really, I mean, actually both teams, they really want to get out in transition. I don't think either team really wants to settle down in their offense in a half court. Um, they want to have advantage in numbers. Take a look at some of the first half action or first quarter action. It was a great catch and finish. Attack that open side block. That was the Hartwell. A little bit of bump, still able to get the shot to go. Shields for Northern Light Health is Southern Aroostook. So out of the timeout, Warrior Basketball with 2.40 to go strong. in the first quarter. Northern Light Health provides the first of four games here at the Augusta Civic Center today. Following this one, it'll be Valley and Bangor Christian boys. Tonight, Dexter Haldale girls. You'll be back for that one tonight, yeah, Karen. Yeah, it'll be exciting. And the final game of the evening will be Mount, v Mount View taking on Monmouth. On this first ever trip to a state final. Mount View hasn't been here since 1987, so long time coming for both these clubs. Shields in the lane, kicks it out, ball thrown away, stolen by Hartwell. Nice pass up ahead to Bigelow. Oh. Great job getting out in transition, trying to get that two on one break. Good look by Liana Hartwell. See that last set was trying to get Ali Shields involved. We'll see if. They try to go to her again. Allie Shields, speaking of her, heads off to her sister, Cammie. Running out front. Landry, in pursuit by the Valley defense. Allie Shields to the free throw line. He's not getting a lot of good open space right now. No, I, you know, they're, they're working on trying to attack everything in the, in the paint. And, Valley's jumping to the ball well. They're closing off. You can see a foul right there. But they're just, they're closing off space, making them kick out, and they're quickly getting out to shooters. Foul goes on Libby Anderson. Legal screen, so. Player control foul. Team control foul on Libby the Anderson. Southern Aroostook Warriors. First the ball goes foul. back to Valley. Second, Leading 10-4. Valley again looking for their first ever girls' goal ball. Boys have six of them in the trophy case. <laughs> Liana's dad yes, has four. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, little pressure there. <laughs> you see in the crowd, we were able to pick out Luke and Jason Hartwell here. Of course, played on those Valley yeah. teams. Brian Andre, you mentioned him, he's here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, Some good history in the stands. 20 years ago, they were here playing for state championships. And that was a lot of fun. Great play. Pass goes inside to Maddie Shields, and she's fouled. So, Outside in that time with Shields running down the lane and she'll head to the free throw line for two. You could see they did a nice job overloading one side. So when she got, that's a hard step to get to help. It's a great play. Oh, Valley goes on Hartwell. That's her second. And the first free throw, no good. Shields will get one more. That's something to watch. They, you know, Liana does a lot for them. Um, controls tempo and you know, helps bring the ball up. So have to watch. We'll have to watch what happens with her defense. Second shot missed. Rebound comes away to Valley. Three point try. That one's good. <laughs> can't give her space. Helen Hill with the three pointer. You are expecting she catches that. She's open. It's going. Up. She got five points in the first quarter. It's a nine point lead for Valley. Southern Aroostook in unfamiliar territory right now, trailing by nine. Down the lane, the runner around it off, no good. Anderson, the follow, can't get it to go. And the rebound pulled away by Valley. They're getting good looks, they just haven't fallen. There's another, another three-pointer, that one missed off the back rim. Rebound loose in the floor, tied up. Possession arrow stays with the Cavaliers. 
the rebounding right now for Valley is making a difference. Defensive rebounding, offensive rebound, they're just, they're getting more chances and, and giving less. Cavs with the basketball. From the inside, three-pointer by Bigelow, yes. Second one, right? Yes. Yeah. Kirsten Bigelow for three. Good luck. And the ball knocked away. If Warriors get it back. He shields down the lane, floats it up, around and in. They stop the bleeding with that one. Well, Cammie Shields, Shields right there doing a good job. She knew her defender was behind her, and she had to attack to make a play happen. Henderson knocks that one out of bounds. It'll stay with Valley with 15.9 to play in the first quarter. Valley out to a 16-6 lead if you're just joining us here from the Augusta Civic Center. On state championship Saturday. Back in the Again. corner. Another one comes up short for Bigelow, and that goes out of bounds. They stay with Southern Aroostook with 11 seconds to play. Coach Cliff Urquhart on the bench, telling his team what he'd like to see them run in the final seconds. Ball rolled up to midcourt. Now the clock starts. And Shields. Down the lane, shot blocked away. Comes down to Valley with one second to go. Don't think they'll get a shot off. They will not. And that's how the first quarter ends. After one, 16-6 in favor of Valley. Back with second quarter action hey, after, folks, after this. It may, it may matter to you. Made possible by people like you. They're shooting it well. They're just a new car, a new home, or what about that vacation you know you deserve? Why spend more when you could spend less? MainCreditUnions.org. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981, with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student athletes from across Maine. The University of Maine at Augusta, <coughs> committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. The environment is just awesome. Great campus, small, close-knit community. Everyone's really welcoming. Everything feels very personal. You feel like you belong here. At the Augusta Civic Center, Toby Nelson along with Karen Magnuson. First quarter in the books. And for the Valley Cavaliers, Karen, you commented during the break, he's shooting the ball very, very well. Oh, they're shooting it great. And, you know, Southern Roostic's getting good looks. It just hasn't fallen yet. Um, if you see them hit one or two threes and they get a little more comfortable, then you might see some more points get going on this board for them. Three three-pointers in the first quarter for Valley. Bigelow with two of them. Matty Hill hit one as well. 16-6, Valley with a lead. Southern Aroostook with the basketball as we start the second quarter. Backdoor cut to Shields. It goes off her fingertips and out of bounds. Turned over back to Valley. Right idea. They, they've run that a couple times throughout the tournament. And nice backdoor play. In the front court, Valley right down the lane. Hartwell up off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound taken off by Landry. Running into the front court for the Southern Aroostook Warriors. Down the lane, a whistle, player control. Yeah, but we've seen two on each end, uh, one on each end of attacking and charges being called. Well, Maddie Hill stood her ground. That's a hard hit. <laughs> I don't think I'd stand there. <laughs> but that's definitely the pace that they want to play with, and that all started with them getting a rebound, right? Like, they've, if they can limit one shot, get the rebound, and then take off, they're going to have numbers and advantages on their side. Shabata Wright checks in for Valley, number 22. I think they're trying to figure out who that foul was on. Uh, I think it was reported. I'm almost positive it was Landry, wasn't it? It was, Seven yes. Yeah, foul. it was number 10. control foul was on number 10, there Emily is. Landry, her first. All we had to do was come did. see us. I know, we knew. <laughs> we can <could> replay. <laughs> First on the team here in the second quarter. Of course, with the new rule, uh, team fouls are reset after every quarter. Making the women's college rules they've used for years. Valley with the lead and the basketball here in the second quarter. This is Clark. Gives it up top. Another three-point drive. Front rim, no good for Bigelow. But the rebound comes down inside. Shot no good. That one missed by Wright. So then Aroostook comes away with the basketball. Quickly into the front court. Transition. Transition. Olivia Ellingwood. Up off the glass and in. And Olivia Ellingwood with the basket. 
And now we have the officials get together. We've had to have a lot of officials meetings here early on with the scoreboard issue. I'm trying to figure out what exactly is the problem. Do you know what? Oh, the official might be hurt. Oh. Oh, it looks like he might have he might have pulled a muscle. So right now the officials talking it over on the floor and they they do have other officials available if they need do. be. So obviously they would change up and go if they need one. Oh, that stinks. So one of the officials, Lance Cowan, a uh, very good official up in, oh. on board 111 yeah. uh, with an injury. So he's going to talk it over with the trainer right now as the teams are going to go to their benches. The main principal association builds partnerships that provides a network of resources, exemplars of leadership, and a culture of collaboration for the benefit of all school community members. For more information on how the Maine Principals Association promotes sports, scholastic achievements, and much, much more, you can check them out on their website, mpa.cc. Of course, uh, it's a very busy uh, website, mpa.cc, during the basketball season with the heel points and uh, everything else. We're going to, the official will be leaving. We're going to get a new official out here in just a moment, but we're going to take a look here at the last couple of baskets. That was the player control, no, that was the basket for a Southern Aroostook that was called back on the player control foul. But they turn it right back over, and it was uh, number five, Olivia Ellingwood, with her first basket of the game. You can see their first two possessions, transition, right? So maybe that's something that they talked about, saying we've got to make sure that we clean up boards and get out as quick as we can. 16 to 8 is the score. And our official supervisor, uh, TJ Halliday, is out right now talking with the scores table. I'm not sure if they're going to continue with two officials right now until a third gets here, or if we're just going to uh, have to wait until they get an official changed up. It looks like they're calling someone down to injured official. Calling someone down to go change up, and maybe they will go with two. Jeez, I you feel bad? Like, you know, as much as kids get you know excited for these moments, officials do too. They work their whole seasons getting to this moment to be able to have these games, and so sad for an official to go down with an injury. So we have an official uh, change. I have uh, been in basketball the better part of 40 years. And never I don't had ever remember, rem remember this happening. Yeah. So. so anyway, we've got a little break right now as uh, we get an official change. That's uh, TJ Halliday talking it over with uh, Doran Stout. He's the tournament director in Augusta. So um, no one really knows what to do because it doesn't happen too often, right? I know. But for everyone who doesn't, they do. They have extra officials on hand for this exact moment. Season seven, uh, we're going to get a word here in just a moment. Sounds good. Thank you. So uh, TJ Halliday just letting us know. Uh, so uh, Mark Turner will come in and be the uh, new official. He was scheduled to officiate the boys' game uh, coming up next, which he probably will just stay and do. Uh, there's going to they're going to allow the teams to warm up. You'll see him on the floor right now, so they can at least uh, keep shooting and stay warm. And right. So you're, you're going through a, a warm-up process. So seven minutes to go in the second quarter. And so a little bit of a stoppage in time while the officials get ready. And you also want to make sure when the new official comes out, he's, he's warmed right, up a little bit, right? <laughs> Wouldn't be good to have another injury, right, from not being warmed up, and then you're down a couple. But, yeah, you're right. I don't think I've, I've known that, you know, they could sub an official, but never seen it. Interesting. We'll take a look at some of the uh, action we've seen so far in this one. As the Valley Cavaliers coming out, what seemed like so long ago now. A couple good looks here for the Valley Cavaliers. We've kind of seen it all so far in this first quarter. We saw a scoreboard that didn't work for a couple minutes. They had a problem with a PA system when we got here. We've had to replace an official now. Um, then there was another stoppage. I don't know yes. what it was, and everyone thought it was a timeout, but it wasn't, it wasn't a, timeout, a timeout. But I don't know what it was. If it was a delay of game, I'm not I'm trying to figure it out. This is a this is an interesting day here in Augusta. Interesting things always happen in Augusta, I, right? <laughs> Let's be I honest. Know. Hey, I got. I felt like we were big time with T.J. Halliday coming over, yes. checking in with us, giving us the scoop. Like this is just like on an NBA game I where they know, come over they and replay the, stuff. Yeah, they got to talk to us. <laughs> 
I should have asked for an autograph. We really should have. should have done. Yes. We should have taken a selfie. We should have done that put that out. Absolutely. Next time. Next time this happens in 40 years, we can do that. I, I remember the time in history where there was a 10-minute delay due to an injury of a ref. On March 2nd, 2024. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you miss a game or want to watch one again? Maine Public is rebroadcasting all of the state finals this weekend. Uh, last night's Class B games were seen this morning on Maine Public, but today's games will begin tonight at 11 o'clock with a replay of the Class A girls. Then championship weekend picks up tomorrow morning at 6 with a full day of excitement from the state championship games with the Class A boys starting at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So uh, go to uh, mainepublic.org slash basketball for a full replay schedule. So you get a chance to watch these again. And, of course, they're on demand online, too. You can go back and watch them anytime. So. Uh. So what do you think? Like, how does this affect the game? This is weird. It is. Yeah, I think for the kids, I mean, obviously you've been on the sidelines as a coach. You've been a player as well. Uh, you know, you, you're in a state championship game. It's a big environment. It's an exciting environment. Valley started off very, very hot. For them, they don't want to stop, right? No, it, it, it is interesting both sides, right? Because Valley's feeling momentum. They had the energy of the fans, the excitement. They're shooting it well. Everything's going right for them. And you've got Southern Roostick, who in that first minute you could see they were starting to get out in transition. They were getting a couple shots that they wanted. And then to have this break, who does that benefit? Does it benefit both? I, you know, for Southern Attention, Roostick, that's, I, I almost think break. it'll be interesting how Santa they come play. out of Main this. Play. Are they going to be more two. relaxed and being able to reset? Yeah. So I don't know. This will be interesting. ASAP. So both teams warming up on the floor right now. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Valley with a lead, 16 to 8. So far, we can run down the numbers for you. Madeline Hill with five points. Kirsten Bigelow with six. Three for Hartwell. A two for Clark. Their total of 16. The uh, Southern Aroostook Warriors, Ellingwood with two. Shields with two. And Candy Shields with four. So uh, that's where we sit. And Southern Aroostook just added. Average-wise, well below their season average at this point. Yeah, and then, like they've missed shots, yes. right? They've taken a couple threes that were in and out. They had a couple layups that they missed. They've been to the foul line. Um, so I just think for them, I think it's pace. I think they they really want to be able to get up and down as much as they can rather than play that half court. So. We'll see if that changes going forward. Well, basketball season, of course, coming to an end today, but it also means it's the start of season seven of high school Quiz Show Maine, which returns on March 21st, so coming up in just three weeks' time. Tune in to watch schools from around the state, match wits, and compete for one the $1,000 first prize. The season schools from Orono to North Berwick will battle it out for the championship. It all starts on Thursday, March 21st at 8 o'clock, right here on Maine Public Television. Check out more at mainpublic.org if you want to learn more about High School Quiz Show Maine or want to rewatch any of these state championship games or watch them live here today. Of course, games in Augusta, also games in Portland today. The Class A's and Double A's are important. Yeah, Coney. Coney's playing right now, so excited to hear how those updates are going. Of course, uh, those that don't know, Karen played at Coney back in 2003, you said graduated? Graduated in 03, yeah. And, of course, coached there and had a highly successful uh, career coaching. Still uh, continues to coach to this day, coaching at Marana Cook, and uh, had a really nice season uh, in your first year in Northern Maine Class B this year, finished yeah. third. So. Yeah, no, I had our, our, our girls had a tremendous season. We were pretty young, but just competed so well and got better every game this season. So it was a lot of fun. I just can't believe... You, you stated it, last day of high school basketball. I just feel like we started a month ago, right. but it, it just it goes by so fast. It does make everything go fast. Started on November 20th, I think, was the first day of tryouts yeah. and, and practices for teams. So, uh, no, it just really makes for a – makes the winter go by. I've, oh, I've it said does. that for years, you know, <laughs> and it, especially for those like me that I don't ski, I don't snowmobile. Yeah. Basketball is kind of it, yeah, you know, yeah. so it, it gets me through the winter. I think we have our, our replacement official coming – out shortly is uh, the teams have been brought back to the bench area. And now I don't know if we are ready to go. I don't see the third official yet. I think uh, there's, there's, yeah, he must be coming out pretty soon because he must have talked to the teams about going to their benches. So they're going, uh, they are talking. Tracy Martin is a lead official here. Bob Thibodeau, the other official, it's still on the court. As we 
still waiting to get our third official to come out. So we had an official with an injury, and unfortunately, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Yeah, we've never seen it. And um, so that means that we've had a little bit of a delay here in this one. Other games, we'll talk about the other championship games. The uh, Coming up, uh, Bangor Christian and Valley Boys. That'll be following this one. And then tonight, the Class C games are here in Augusta. The Dexter girls take on Haldale. That'll be uh, finished up by Mount View uh, taking on Monmouth. This might be the only time when an official comes on the court and they're going to get a round of applause. I know. <laughs> Poor <laughs> things. <laughs> they do such a good job, right? Like, it's one of those... Jobs known, not a lot of people are going to thank them for what they do, but we wouldn't be able to play without right. them. So they do a great job. And that is the truth. Uh, let's send it over to the floor. Jim Baines right now standing by. Jim. Hey, thanks, Toby. I just spoke with TJ Halliday, the supervisor of officials. Due to new protocol, they cannot go to a two man, they have to go to a three man. The problem is, we got a, three, a third official back there for the boys' game, but the thing is, we don't know if that's a good thing to do or not. So they're discussing it right now. That's where we are. Um, I spoke with TJ. He may be joining us momentarily. Right. Toby, back to you. Thanks very much, Jim. So he's on the spot with that one. Uh, TJ Halliday, of course, a former, I say a former official. I don't I don't think he officiates anymore, but for a long time, oh, he, he was one of, the, yes. one of the guys. Here he used to officiate when I was yeah. in high school. Yeah. I'm not saying he's old, but obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does a wonderful job. He's taken over as a supervisor uh, for officials in the state. And, uh, of course, during the tournament, you have, a, you have sites in Bangor, Augusta, two sites in Portland. They have to provide three officials for every game. And as you mentioned before, for, for a lot of these referees and, and basketball officials, this is a, it's, it's an honor to be able to, to officiate in these games. It is. They look forward to it. They love competitive games. They love to be, be here in the moment. And they... You know, when you talk to officials, like, they're passionate about it. They talk about the different things that, you know, what they are looking for. And, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot about officials and their hand signals and all the just stuff that you don't think about, but they do, and, and they want to always be right. So, Southern Aroostook back out on the court. Uh, the Valley Cavaliers still in their huddle right now. Tracy Martin, the, one of the officials, she's going to go over and talk with Cliff Urquhart, the coach of Southern Aroostook. Again, a lot of games during the regular season are officiated with two-person mechanics, so it's not a not unlike these. Both officials have done a lot of two-person games right. over their careers. Both Tracy and Bob have refereed for a long time. Oh, we see some stripes. Hey, here we go. I told you, he's going to get a hand. All right. <laughs> So Mark Turner from Northern Maine, he will be our official, and he'll probably want to take a few jogs up and down the court, Mark. I don't want I you know. to pull a hamstring. So. I know. So he'll come in and be our third official, and we're ready to go. All so right. let's reset it. Seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. So like a rain delay in baseball, <laughs> we had ourselves a little delay here in this basketball game. Back in, the shot no good. Taken by Valley, that one taken by Hartwell. Jump ball, and the possession arrow is going to favor the Valley Cavaliers. the baseline, Bigelow inbounds to Hartwell. And she's calling for the travel. So a turnover, and it's probably going to take a second because it's almost oh, like a second start, it right? Is. It is. And it's not even like a halftime, right, where you get to go in the locker room, you talk, you come out, you have two minutes and get going. It was everyone's kind of just waiting. So it'll probably take a little bit, but happy to be back. Last basket was scored by Ellingwood. She has the basketball, number five, gives it to Shields. Now Ellingwood. Landry to Shields. Shields down the lane, a whistle, and a traveling violation. Travel on Southern Aroostook, on Maddie Shields, and turn back over to Valley. 16 to eight the score. Cavaliers leading the Southern Aroostook Warriors in this Class B girls final. Hartwell, corner for the Cavaliers, to right, now Bigelow. Nice pass oh, off nice underneath. Yeah. Lay up for Hill goes. I was just going to say, Southern Roost have really started to extend a little bit defensively and make those passes tougher. But that back door, that makes it tough. Yields comes up short, rebound, oh, pulled down. Great outlet. Here come that. Are going to be Cavaliers into the front court. Shot blocked. Hartwell shot blocked. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Valley. That was picture perfect transition. They got it out quickly and hit her right in stride. Nice job. 
Ten-point lead for the Cavaliers. Shot short, rebound, Hartwell off the glass and in. She's tough. Great defensive effort by Rustic, but she still gets a play. To a 12-point lead for the Valley Cavaliers. Emily Landry. Cammy Shields. Nice three off the back rim, no good. The outside shooting woes continue. Shields again. Drives through traffic, lost the ball, loose on the floor. It's tied up. Possession arrow stays with Southern Aroostook. Again, it's not for lack of shots. It's just lack of shots falling right now. Right. I mean, they're getting, and until those fall, Valley can really sink in and close off penetration um, until they make that shot from the outside. That's inside the shield, knocked away. It's set inbound play for Southern Aroostook. It'll stay with the Warriors. Valley's just doing a really nice job of trying to get shoulder to shoulder and close off any gaps for anyone to get to the rim. And Shields on the inbounds pass into Landry. Valley Shields up fakes, gives it off. Addy Shields again. He'll step back, try three, can't get the roll. Rebound taken down by Valley, and the Cavaliers like the outlet and push. But there, Hartwell saw she didn't have numbers and just pulled yeah. it back. Down low, knocked away and stolen. Now stolen right back by Hartwell. Hartwell, nice, nice pass block. inside, up off the glass and in. Riley Clark. Does such a nice job of taking the opportunity, whether it's get to the rim, get the next open player, look opposite. Like, just a very intelligent player. Clark with the bucket. We're going to take a look at that one right now. And that right there, like, a lot of people, that's a skilled pass. Like, just a nice little floater over the top that leads her to the rim. Good luck. Hey, public YouTube channel not only has all the state final games live, but you can also catch up with ones you may have missed or want to watch them again. While there, you can check out other videos or dig into the archive. Dive into YouTube.com slash main public. You can see all kinds of state championship basketball and much, much more. So I guess coming out of the uh, little break we had, it's been a 6 nothing run here for Valley. Yeah, so I, it's hard. You don't know whose advantage or if there is an advantage, but still Valley's just doing what they need to do. You can see that they're having control of this game. Amy Shields, front court with it for the Southern Aroostook Warriors. Trying to get on track here in the state finals. Maddie Shields on the drive. Good defense. Hartwell with her step for step. Down low, Cammie Shields. Weaves through traffic up off the glass and in. She went a long way around the barn to get back. But they needed to see one go through the hoop right now, so that was great play. All knocked away, a whistle, and a player control foul on Valley. Goes on Madeline Hill. It's plays like that that can really make a difference. Like taking a charge, a player control like that to give your group energy. There was two or three girls. You could see them start to celebrate. Sometimes that's all it takes. And then on the offensive end, they're going to feel a little bit better about what they've been doing. Warriors to inbound. They've trailed all game long. Addie Shields gives it out to Cami. Her cousin, the three-pointer off the front rim, no good. Rebound, though, taken down. This is Landry. Landry to Ali Shields. Working around the perimeter. Cami Shields, baseline. McGarry. Valley is doing a great job moving feet and cutting yes. off angles. Just getting a foot to a baseline, not allowing that penetration. You know, it, and you're watching Southern Aroostook, like they're almost questioning every shot right now. And at that point, that's really hard. You're not you're not going to be able to be a great shooter if you question those shots. They just got to put them up. Landry along the baseline. Nice job. They got moved the ball. It was patient there. He scored the last four, 22-12. Just over three minutes to play here in the first half. Hartwell along the baseline. Inside shot block as Hill shot block. Taken away. Here comes Landry. Warriors want to push the pace. Down court, goes with a left hand around and off, no good. Another shot is no good, and foul on Valley. So, 
Warriors will have to earn it from the free throw line. I think that's the second one that she's done that. She comes down that right side and does that like you little Euro step. What? Well, that was a nice job. Good take on the baseline, bringing it back to her left. That was Landry's last basket. She's at the free throw line shooting two now. As the first shot's good. And for Southern Aroostook, you're just focused on chipping away, right? Like, don't look at the score. Just continue to do what you need to do. Rebound the basketball. Get out in transition. Landry right now is taking over those four points that you, you could see the confidence building for them. Second shot is good. Down to an eight-point ball game. The Valley scored eight, six in a row, and they've answered back, and now they stopped the bleeding. Liana Harwell. <laughs> There's a big play after big play today. And you need a bucket, you go to her. She's got seven in this championship game. Hartwell with the rebound. Cavaliers run into the front court. Hartwell, just an eighth grader, gives it off to Hill. As Hill steps back for three off the front rim, no good. And a foul in the rebounding action. Gonna go on Valley. Goes on Brianna Mills. That was a good call. That was a great box out. She had good position. And again, we say Hartwell's an eighth grader. I mean, she has now played a full season of varsity basketball. Right. So she's more like a freshman, but still as a oh, freshman. As a fr I just, it's unreal at what she's able to do because she's not acting like that, right? Like if you don't know, you're looking thinking she's a senior in this group or a junior, right? Without experience, but she's not. <laughs> She'll be around for a long time to come for Valley. Trying to win their first gold ball. Still got a long way to go in this game. Ball knocked away and stolen, taken out by Hill. Hill gives it up front. This is right and travel. So a turnover. Ball goes back to Southern Aroostook. Southern Aroostook's pressure is getting better, you know, throughout this game, and they're causing some more turnovers. Maddie Shields. Checking back in the game, Anderson got the basketball, holds over her hands, gives it out. Landry tries three, the miss. Rebound taken off by Valley. Hartwell comes to get it. Pass, uh, tried to pass it into the corner and a little bit too far. You know what, though? That, she, that was a great pass. If you're watching, she was trying to lead. It was a wide open layup. And her teammate just went out too far, and she was trying to lead her to the rim to be like, get to the rim. It's going to be an open layup. So it was actually a very good look. Free throw line, Landry. Maddie Shields. That's a confident shot. See, you could see. They just, when they're shooting it, right there, you could tell when she shot that, she wanted to shoot that. So that was a good shot. Down to a seven point ball game, as close as it's been in a while. Back down inside, Hartwell goes up with a shot, it's blocked, it goes out of bounds. Hey, blocked, I guess it did not get touched, but it goes out of bounds off of Hartwell. And now Southern Rooster starting to chip away with a minute to go here in the corner. Yeah, you could see the momentum's changing a little bit. They're starting to feel more confident. But you could tell, those the last couple of baskets, have, it's, they're deciding what they want to do in offense, not questioning. Nice play, we saw that early in the first quarter. Right to Shields. She scored the last five points for Southern Aroostook, and it's down to a five-point game with 50 seconds to play. They had a 16-point lead at one point. Well, is that one blocked away? Valley wanted the foul, was not called. Shields with a runner, no good. A rebound taken down, picked up by Anderson. And now stolen back by Valley. The ball's going all over the place. Shields gets it back for the Warriors along the baseline. Oh, good pass. Anderson tied up. Possession arrow to Valley with 27 seconds to go in the quarter. That was a great look. If she just caught and turned and put that up, she had great position there. It was 22 to 8. Since then, it's been a 11-2 run for Southern Aroostook to cut this down to a five-point ball game. Hartwell off the hill. Now baseline. Right, knocked away and stolen. That's where the length for Southern Aroostook will get you. Up ahead of the pack, two candy shields to the glass, lays it in. Good end to the second quarter for Southern Arusa with eight seconds left. left. Cut it to three. Hill up ahead. Hartwell, little pull up pop around the rim and off. No good. Rebound taken down as the horn sounds. Ending the first half. But if you're Southern Arusa, you can feel a heck of a lot better going to the locker room. Yeah, you could, you could see it was about those last three minutes of just really good plays. And I'll start with Landry. Landry made some big plays for them. It was a 16-point game. It's down to three. 
at the half. Score at the half, the Valley Cavaliers 24, the Southern Aroostook Warriors 21. We're back to the Augusta Civic Center for halftime right after this. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Having free college, it's awesome. I'm not going to have to have this weight of debt hanging over my shoulder. It's so nice to be able to not have to worry about that burden. So yeah, set you up for success. Five County Credit Union, serving members since 1956, committed to delivering convenience through technology, branch access, and local service. Sheridan Construction, a main company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Hammond Lumber Company, with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. At the Augusta Civic Center, Toby Nelson, Aaron Magnuson. In just a moment, we're going to get the Sportsmanship Awards. They're presented by the Finance Authority of Maine. The school recognized with a Sportsmanship Award. They've displayed respect to coaches, players, and officials, fair play, honesty and integrity, and a true love for the game of basketball. Thank you to Fame, the Finance Authority of Maine, for helping the Maine Principals Association present these Sportsmanship Awards today. Hey, did you know there's free money available to help pay for education and training beyond high school? Even if you're not sure what you want to do, just file the FAFSA. File online now at studentaid.gov and get free help from Fame at famemaine.gov, uh, famemaine.com slash FAFSA. Let's send it to the floor right now. Integrity and a true love for the game of basketball. In Northern Maine, Class B, girls, basketball, we are pleased to recognize the Black Raiders of Winslow. Here today to receive the award are coaches Joe Rosignall and Kevin Acorn, along with players Carissa Curlis, Addison Lopes, Amber Fortin, Sierra Sharp, Tabby Algren, Amara Rio, and Tenley Netto. Congratulations, Winslow Black Raiders. So sportsmanship awards from the Maine Principals Association. We'll have more in the boys' game and then more uh, this evening as well. Uh, Karen, looking back at some of the first half uh, statistics, or at least what the first half was, uh, Valley kind of rolling, and then all of a sudden the script flipped a bit there towards the end of the quarter. Yeah, and you know, kind of the competitiveness that was occurring, I mean, it's kind of, like you said, it has flipped, but we were expecting this type of game, right. a closer game, yes. right? Yep. Where both sides are hitting big shots, making big plays. Um, and so I think this is what it's going to be for the rest of it. I, I think right now Southern Roostick is finding their groove. I think they look a lot more confident. They have an idea of what they want to do, and they're making decisions quicker. Um, and I think Valley just at the end got a little rattled with that run. Uh, great for them to get into time into their halftime to be able to settle down, and we'll see what happens when they come back. So you're looking at their field goals, you know, Valley 21 to, to 16. And for Southern Roostick, a lot of those shots came more towards the last couple of minutes in that half, um, which helped their field goal percentage. Free throws, you know, just been a couple here and there. Um, but turnovers have been pretty equal. I, I'd love to see what rebounding has been like. I thought in the beginning, Valley dominated rebounding. 
Um, and then you see that it's changed a little bit towards the end. Those are some of the first half numbers for you. It's a three-point lead for the Valley Cavaliers. The third member of our broadcast crew, you've seen him a couple times already, is Jim Baines. He's got a guest standing by right now. Jim? Oh, I got a lot of guests here. You know, Southern Rustic has a great story and a wonderful story tradition in girls' basketball. Six gold balls. But here's the beautiful thing. We got four mother-daughter pairings, and in one case, two kids that have won gold balls here. Moms, I'm going to introduce yourselves and introduce your kids, please. Uh, hi, I'm Brittany White Brewer, and this is my daughter, Sydney, and Gracie. I'm Kim Russell, and this is my daughter, Maddie Russell. All right. Jess Collier Porter, and my daughter, McKaylin Porter. And Jessica Walker Green, my daughter, Bree Daggett. So here's my question. So first of all, who came up with this uh, stylized? Uh, me. I, I saw Bangor Christian last weekend, and they were sporting amazing sparkly coats, so I had to get me one. So. Did she sell you one wearing it, or was that a pretty easy sell? I just grabbed it. I just grabbed it right now. But for, question for any, any of the kids right now. If you saw your mom's going to play basketball, that tradition. How was that uh, growing up for you guys? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was good. I mean, it was obviously it gave me some motivation to try to be a little better. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah, you know, it was always some friendly competition in the house, so. Was she always that competitive growing up here as well? Or? Oh, very much so, yes. What about competitive girls over here, too? Oh, uh, yes. I won one, she has two, and this one has three states. So. And, and they never shut up about it, I'm sure. Oh, never, never. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah. nope. What is it about Dyer Brook and, and, and girls basketball that has, has so much success over the years? What do you, who wants to take that one? Um, we have great peewee programs and get the kids started at a really urge, early age. Shout out to Jimmy Lyon. That's a hard thing to do in such a small town, too. The kids have a lot of things to do today. They got a lot more things to keep you occupied than when we were kids. So how do you get them involved in basketball? How, what's the your secret there? Bribe them? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Don't bribe them. No, um, I have heard that that's happened before. But um, no, I mean, just really, there's not a lot to do in northern Maine, so we just want to get in the gym. I mean, a lot of us work at school. Well, Warriors, thank you for joining us. We got Warriors coming back out on the floor. I'm sure you're going to pull it for them big time here. Toby, back to you. Okay, Jim, thanks very much. You talk about tradition, Southern Aroostook tradition with the varsity basketball going back to the 90s, and a lot of that's right there. Yeah, I mean, that, that was pretty cool, right? Can you imagine sharing that with your kids, yeah. that experience? I think that's, that's just amazing. But the things that stuck out, right? Uh, they want to do it year round. Their parents are involved and they all get along and they have keys to the gym to be able to get in the gym and let kids play. Like that right there, that, that helps breed success. It does. Looking at some of the first half highlights. Score at the half, 24-21, Valley with a lead. Back with the second half right after this. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Northern Light Health, encouraging Mainers to ask themselves, how are you, really? Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. The environment is just awesome. Great campus, small, close-knit community. Everyone's really welcoming. Everything feels very personal. You feel like you belong here. I think I've really learned a lot from watching High School Quiz Show. Just like the endless potential of intellect. I used to want to be on Jeopardy. I think that was like my life goal at one point. And my dreams have finally come true. So it's a bit of an emotional moment. I think we're all super thrilled to see Todd. We are big fans. <laughs> At the Augusta Civic Center, did you ever want to be on Jeopardy, Karen? Uh, no. <laughs> if it was a sports category, I'd, like I'd play, dominate. Yeah, I'd like to play at home yep. for fun. I maybe get two questions. <laughs> I can, but you're right. It all depends on the category. But no, 
It's fun to watch. I'm good with history and like presidents and sports, but you get into the science of nature and <laughs> I'm just literature. You know, I'm just not there. My memory is yeah. awful. Anyone that knows me knows how bad it is. I just no can't do it. But love watching everyone else and I'll cheer them on. <laughs> Southern Aroostook ball to start the second half. Uh, so back, we had a break during the first half because we needed a new official. The official got hurt. So the official that came into the game, Mark Turner from Northern Maine, he was actually scheduled to officiate the next game. Uh, so now they're bringing in a new official uh, for the next game. Uh, Wes Royce will come in and uh, take take the place in that yeah, game. Yeah, so. so now we're covered. We're, we're covered. Good. We're good. Southern Aroostook ball. They had a little fury to end the first half, and they start the third quarter with three. That's great confidence. After some of the shooting woes they had to come out in the first shot they're going to take is that. Nice job. They were down by 16, uh, 14, excuse me, in the first half. It was 22 to 8. And now we're tied at 24 24 as we start the second half after the Candy Shields 3. So Hill for Valley goes down inside. We get a whistle and a turnover. Ball goes back to Southern Aroostook. They can take the lead back here right now. Wow, what a turn of events, right, from starting the game to now. But Southern Aroostook is feeling good, and you can see it on the court. Shields, this is Candy Shields, to her cousin Madison. And now Allie Shields. Gary with it, Anna McGarry. Looking around the perimeter. Playing a little more confidence right now. Shields for the lead, off the rim, no good. Rebound taken down inside. Maddie Shields, double teamed, and we get a jump ball. Possession arrow goes to the ball. That was a they had a good opportunity right there off of an offensive board, but Leanna did a nice job tying them up to get the possession back. I'll turn back over to the Cavaliers. Tied at 24, minute gone by in the third quarter. This class D championship, shot missed by Hill. Rebound off to the corner taken by Clark and now thrown away. Aguirre running into the front court. Shields down the lane, floater off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound taken down by Southern Aroostook. Maddie Shields. Nice job being patient, working the ball around. Landry off to Shields. Landry drives baseline, got by her defender off the glass and in. You know, she is strong with her left hand. It's, you know, she loves going that right side baseline and bring it back to the middle to be able to finish that. So Landry with a bucket and Southern Aroostook with a lead, 26-24. In the lane, ball tied up. Possession goes back to Southern Aroostook as Riley Clark tied up. And the Warriors really starting to take control of this one. She had this, oh, there's that three to open up. It's a big hit. You could see her clapping as she's going back. That's just, their confidence is building. Oh, you see this play again. They've done it. There's the third one. Inside, Shields off the glass and in. Isn't it nice it's, when things come together like I that? I know, right? They run that nice stack, and they just get that screen, and she just attacks that open block. Clark to Hartwell. Hartwell gives it back up top. It's Hill. The Valley had a 22-8 lead in the first half. But so the first have chipped away. It was a three-point game at the half, and they've come out on a 7-0 run right now. Three-point try on the other end. That one missed. A Bigelow with a miss, the shot and the putback, and Valley on the scoreboard in the third quarter. You know, that was a great offensive yeah. board, but what was even bigger was Liana's positioning on that. She pushed her out to get that spot and to finish that layup. Hartwell with the bucket, 28-26. Two-point lead for Southern Aroostook, as Valley now playing from behind. McGarry, Maddie Shields, with a whistle and a carrying violation, a turnover, and the ball goes back to Valley. I think they were trying to run another set there and just got a little confused. And, but they've done a nice job to open up this quarter. Hartwell with the basketball. Hill, all stripped away, tied up. Possession arrow will stay with Valley. Had a couple jump balls so far here in this third quarter. Southern Rustic's done a nice job on Hill. You know, they've really, I mean, she's a good ball player that's had a lot of success in this playoff run. Uh, and you can tell that they've keyed in on him. Bounce pass comes up top with Hill, and she traveled. Took a little step before she put the ball down, so turns it over. You know, it's, it's tough. When you're the best player and one of the best, you're, just, you're gonna get a lot of people throwing things at you and knowing exactly where you are, sending double teams. And, um, so Hill's 
she's working hard to get what she can get. Landry with Shields. Tammy Shields hit the three-pointer to tie it to start the third quarter. Along the baseline, Landry shot missed. Rebound taken down by Clark. And hands it off to Hartwell. Front court to Hartwell. Now along the baseline, Bigelow. Floater off the last, actually, the side of the backboard. Goes out of bounds. It'll go back over to Southern Aristic as Libby Anderson checks in for the Warriors. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Toby Nelson, Karen Magnuson with you from the Augusta Civic Center. On state championship Saturday, main public television on the air and online as well. So we're statewide and worldwide. A player control foul on Anderson. Yeah, uh, they were doing a nice job. They were getting that cut and then going to that two double screen on that block. And she just slid down to try to get that screen. But you can't move when I'm setting those screens. That's her second foul. All back to Valley. 28-26. Scoring is kind of stymied right now. It's stolen back by Shields. You see the double team on Hill. Every time she catches it, they're going to work really hard to try to limit her. Danny Shields from long range, no good. Landry with a rebound and pulls it out. Off to Allie Shields for three. Swift. Good shot. Great shot. And you know, you hear about Shields, right? Both of the sisters. But Landry's doing so many good things. Down the lane, the runner no good and a foul. Hartwell gets fouled. Go ahead to the free throw line for two. You go back to, that's a great drive right there. She gets in, she gets hit with the body. You know, Landry, I think, had a pretty nice block there, but it wasn't, that's not the foul. It was the body that came from Anderson, I believe. So the free throw for Hartwell is good. Hartwell unofficially with 10 points now. Look at that, eighth grader. Oh. <laughs> She's just come play after play, you know, when they needed it the most. Like even these free throws, like these couple points that she's given them, and you could feel all the momentum going to her stick, and she comes and nice and calmly hits two free throws. Down to a three-point ball game. 35 to go, third quarter from Augusta. Shields down the lane, puts it up off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound taken down by Valley. Cavaliers running. Hartwell into the front court. Spins through the lane, runs into a defender with a whistle. Time, maybe a timeout. Yeah, Valley called a timeout. Great call, Valley. We probably weren't going to get much there. Now he can draw up something out of bounds, hopefully get them two points. Yeah. Your Take a look at the Southern Aristic Warriors. Landry, great baseline drive back to her left. Pass from Landry. Some big shots. Shields three pointer. So again, the Warriors getting it and making the shields, but Landry's kind of been oh, that third person. Doing so many little things that people might not notice, right? You're noticing the three, but. Before that, there was a shot. She got the offensive board to give them that extra possession. I just, she has done so many little things that's helped them go on these runs. Out of the timeout, Valley basketball on the baseline. 317 to play in the third quarter. Pass comes in wide open. <laughs> oh, that's good. good. Play. That's a great executed play. So Bree Mills with the bucket. Brianna Mills' first points of the championship game. Comes out of the timeout. That's exactly what you wanted of time. Yeah, right? I mean, now you don't feel like you've wasted it, right? Like, that's what a well-drawn-up play used, used her as a decoy. Shields three-pointer miss. Anderson, the follow, gets it to go. Big board. See, that's a rebound they got in the first half that they couldn't convert, and they're converting those now. Nice job. 33-30, Warriors back on top by three. Here's Hill. Out to Clark. Out to Bigelow. Clark gets it back. Great extra pass. Shot blocked. Mill's shot was blocked. And coming out with it is Ali Shields. Shields down the lane or off the back rim, no good. Rebound taken to Landry. Kick out, three-point try. Shields, swing. Ooh. Is that third, third three this quarter? Yes, it is. Yeah. It opens up a lot when you can make shots. Tammy's second three, your sister Allie with the other one. And it's up to a 36-30 advantage for Southern Aroostook. 
on the baseline. Hill, the shot, no good, but she got pushed. And Madeline Hill will head to the free throw line for two. You know, Madeline Hill, like, watching her play, she you could tell how badly she wants to win. She's trying to do everything she can for her team to create. She's gotten hit, she's got knocked down. Uh, and there's some frustrations in this game for her, but she just continues to battle. And then, right there, like, she hasn't scored as much as she normally would, right? And then to come and hit that free throw, like, that's tough. That's a lot of mental toughness right there to step up and hit these. One of two from the line, rebound, put back, no good. And it goes out of bounds, stays with Valley. So, Hill one of two at the free throw line. Eight points in the game for her, eight points in the state final. It's Bigelow inbound. And I think for this turn, she's averaging like 18 or 19 points a game, right? So, it's a little below her average. Oh, good take. Oh. Couldn't get it to fall, ball out of bounds, stays with Valley. But you can see it, like watching her, you can see that, like, oh, that was a great take. It's just the finish wasn't there for her. Good looks, you want her to keep doing it. This is Clark, her shot around the oh. rim and in. Oh. Soft shot. Hit right the rim right. four times. It's a good look. Down to a three-point ball game with a minute 40 to play in the third quarter. This is the game we were expecting, yeah. not so much what we saw early on. I right, think. right. Oh, here it is, that screen, that cut. Oh, better defender, they had that nice help side step. Landry for three, off the mark, no good. Rebound, Anderson. Fields tries to save it in and runs out of room along the sideline. So it's turned over, ball back to Valley with a minute 22 to play in the third quarter. Hey, you're seeing Valley made a great read on that. That's that high post stack, and they set that screen to have the cut. Defended well that time. Clark hands it off, three-pointer Hartwell off the side of the rim, no good. Rebound taken inside, kick out, nice Hill kick. tries three, no good. Rebound taken out in the corner by Southern Aroostook and the Warriors running into front court. Tammy Shields. Hands it off to Allie Shields. Wanted the three-point try, didn't take it. Cammy will, though, around the rim and off. And the weak side board taken by Hartwell. Job, way to control the basketball there. And three pass. Entry. Hill, turnaround shot, can't get it to fall. Gets her own rebound, puts it up, off the glass, and in. That's what she makes happy for a kid like that that works as hard as she does to be able to see that go through. Her. Great effort. 36 35, down the lane, whistle, blocking foul. But for Valley, only their first team foul of the third quarter, so not a shooting situation. The Warriors to inbound underneath their own basket. Did you see that space that they had? The shooting has allowed, you know, Valley has to go out now to shooters, which gives that space for them to attack now to the rim. Maddie Shields inbounds, up top. Entry pass inside. As Landry goes up with a shot, no good. Rebound comes away to Valley. Cavaliers can retake the lead before the end of the quarter. Hartwell gives it off. Bigelow tries three, comes up short. Rebound loose, picked up. And now it's still loose in the floor, picked up by Southern Aroostook with Shields, down to four seconds. Shields has time into the front court. She sees the clock, throws it up at the buzzer, off the side of the rim, no good. And the third quarter in the books from the Augusta wow. Civic Center. It's a ball game. Back to for the fourth quarter. Warriors lead it by one, going to the fourth. We're back right after this. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Having free college, it's awesome. I'm not going to have to have this weight of debt hanging over my shoulder. It's so nice to be able to not have to worry about that burden. So yeah, it sets you up for success. Thanks to Maine Credit Union's Surf Network, I have access to the largest surcharge-free ATM network in the state. Find a Surf ATM at maincreditunions.org. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981, with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student-athletes from across Maine. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. 
It's a one-point game going to the fourth quarter, looking at some of the Valley High Cavaliers to get back into this one. Yeah, they just, they really closed out that quarter well. They needed to, um, and they had some big plays. Big plays for their star players. Hill with 10 points. Saw that last highlight was her shot to get it to a one-point game. 36-35, starting the fourth quarter. Toby Nelson, Karen Magnuson from the Augusta Civic Center. The class D championship in under eight minutes. We'll hand out a first goal ball of the day. Inside Landry, kick out. Open three-point try comes up short. And taken by Olivia Ellingwood, who kicked in at the quarter break, and it goes out of bounds, so Valley gets the ball back. Led the whole first half and uh, into the early moments of the third quarter. It was Cami Shields that hit a three-pointer to tie it, and then Southern Aristic started to take the lead at that point. Yeah, and now it's, now it's going, able to go back and forth. Has a three-pointer, oh. 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 and off, hangs on the rim, falls off. Rebound loose in the floor. And the possession arrow will favor Valley. That three-pointer by uh, number 10, Kristen Bigelow, is halfway down. I don't know how it didn't go through the rim. I know, and she hit two, I believe, in the first quarter, and she's missed a couple, but you want her to shoot those, because that falls, everybody's going to erupt in here for them. Hill goes down inside the Clark, and she's fired. That goes on Emily Landry. The third. They do a nice job of finding different options in the post. Sometimes it's her, sometimes it's Liana Hartwell. Um, Mills has got, uh, she's got a couple, so do a nice job of working it in. You get her Hartwell, she's got the basketball. Pull up, pop, side of the rim, can't get it to go. Rebound comes down to Shields. Shields running into the front court with it for Southern Arusta. Right to the glass, shot no good, blocking foul on Dallas. You see a lot, Southern Roostick, they must practice as they come down. You see her, she comes down with her right hand and then goes and pulls over. And, you know, Landry's done two of those. Um, they're just, uh, you can see so many of them, they come down with that right hand and they pull that back to their left, whether on the right side or left side. That's first free throw. It is, it works, right? First free throw good for Shields. She'll get one more. Maddie Shields with six points in this championship game. Second shot on the way is good. Evan Aroostik, seven minutes away from their third straight goal ball. Leading by three. On the baseline, Bigelow lost the handle. And a foul on Valley. Just going away by Emily Landry. See the great step up. Nice job getting a block on that. Madison Shields coming up over the top with that block, knocking it away. Southern Aroostook ball, leading by three, 6.50 to play in the fourth quarter. Great crowd on hand here, the Valley Cavaliers faithful, holding all the blue across the way. Shields, little step back shot for her around the rim and off, no good. Landry, the follow, can't get it to go. And the whistle, the jump ball, possession stays with Southern Aroostook. Again, Southern Aroostook with an offensive rebound. You know, rebounds are key for them to get second and third chance shots. Shields inbound. Good play. Back door, layup, off the glass and in. Allie Shields with the bucket. Allie Shields. Let's see that set up. That was a nice play. Up to a five-point lead for Southern Aroostook. Hartwell on the drive, goes up, can't get it to fall. The rebound, Offensive the putback. rebounds. Brianna Mills. Nice job. Brianna. Stayed on that weak side and cleaned up that board. Down to a three-point game. Danny Shields. Good drive right to the glass herself and lay it in. Yeah, nice job being patient and just splitting between that defense. 42-37, three-point try comes up short. Rebound taken down by Shields of Southern Arista. This is Allie Shields, corner, goes to McGarry, down low. Tammy Shields, shot good, and the foul. That was a good decision. You could see that they had an outside shot and they decided to get it to the block. You see, she was open, they got it to the block, and she was just patient. Split two and one. 
Now on Bree Mills, her third. And going to the free throw line here. Got to cap off a three-point play is Candy Shields. Biggest lead of the game now for the Warriors at seven. As the free throw is good, make it eight. She's been tough today, whether it's shooting threes, attacking the rim, making her free throws. She's a tough player. 45-37, Southern Aroostook the lead over Valley. Cavaliers need a bucket right now. Inside, ball knocked away by Candy Shields out of bounds. You know, and you're watching her as much as she's competing on the offensive end, she's competing on the defensive end, right? It's hard to be guarding Liana Hartwell tonight. It, it, she's doing a great job. Down the lane, Hill can't get it to go. Rebound comes down, though, to Valley. Step back, three-point draw. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Down the line, Hill. Jeez. That's a big shot. Big shot. You missed that layup, right? And she's just mentally tough to be able to take those shots and make them. Hill for three, and a whistle, and a traveling violation. So the Valley's going to make a run. You feel like right now is the time. Yeah, and you can, you can feel the energy a little bit starting to shift. Um, so we'll see if they can get something here on this end. We'll see what they run. Hartwell with it. Team trails by five. Valley had a 14-point lead in the first half, so the Aroostook just had an eight-point lead. Down the lane, Hill. Bounce pass inside looking for Clark. And it's stolen away by... So then Arusta. Shields into the front court. Bounce pass. Great bounce pass. No good. McGarry tries to fall on the other end. A whistle. Traveling violation. Fans behind us don't love the call. <laughs> I actually think it was the right call. <laughs> she got the rebound. She went to rip it, right? So you see this. She gets the rebound. They got the ball. She rips it, and then she falls. You know, that's unfortunate, yep. but... That was good work. Didn't want to call the other way. It's the ball stolen, taken out by Southern Aroostook. Candy Shields down the lane. The runner off the window, no good. Anderson, the follow, gets it to go. That's her second Ooh. offensive rebound that's converted to four points this half. Anderson with a bucket. Back up to a seven-point advantage for the Warriors. Off in the corner. Hartwell with a drive, tries to shovel it along the baseline, it's stolen away. Outlet pass up ahead, it goes to Ali Shields, coast to coast, shot good. Oh, oh Roostick's just really doing such a good job getting up and down the court. Coach Gordon Hartwell has seen enough. He'll take a timeout here. You see this kick out pass, Shields coming right into your living room. Nice job gathering it. They're really, their pace right now, right? It's just changed a little bit. They're able to get up and down a little bit more um, and getting more opportunities at the rim, offensive rebounding. Nine point advantage for Southern Aroostook. Broadcast of the Maine State High School Basketball Championships is made, made possible by members like you since 1979. Thank you to tens of thousands of people who helped make this annual tradition available to fans around the world for free. To show your support of basketball and Maine Public Television, become a member. Head to mainepublic.org and click on the big red donate button in advance. We thank you for your support of Maine Public Television. Taking a look right now is it was a five-point game and the Warriors with some transition basketball and good interior play as well. Oh, great interior play. And you know, you're just seeing Allie and Cami Shields, like they're making big play after big play right now in the second half of their teams. I want to thank everybody behind the scenes as well, uh, making this broadcast possible. Director today, Andre Cormier, producers Kurt Chadbourne. Rodney Verrill from the New England School of Communications, Huston University, really pushing some buttons, doing some great work behind the scenes as well. So takes a big cast, a lot of people you don't see uh, to put on these championship games as, as Hill got ran into by her teammate. And uh, of course she's trying to walk it off. And I just, I do enjoy watching her play. Yeah. It's just, I think Southern Rusick has done a great job of making it so tough for her today, but she just, there's plays that she's continuing to make for her team. Fill it by nine. Cavaliers need a bucket. Hartwell down the lane, puts it up off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound taken down by Anderson, and she's fouled. Hey, what, Anderson has played a nice role here for the Southern Aroostook team, hasn't she? Yeah, she's cleaning up boards on both ends. She's scored a couple baskets, but 
just limiting other teams to one shot is huge, especially the way that Southern Aristic wants to run. If you can rebound and get those outlets, then they're getting stuff in transition, and it's been to their advantage. And now we have a timeout. Do we have an injury timeout? As a Bree Mills is going to check out. I, th I think Brianna Mills might have. She's got a bloody nose. Uh, I don't know if that was part of what happened when Hill was hit, because that's. I think that's who ran into it. Yeah, I think so, too. Just came a little bit later, but yeah, hopefully we can get that cleaned up real quick for her. He's over on the bench right now. Oh, nice flex cut. Yeah, a whistle. Good flex cut. And a foul on Valley. They've run the flex often tonight, and that's the first time that they really got something off of it, off of that initial cut. Starting number 10, Kirsten Bigelow, personal foul, number one. Kirsten Bigelow Kirsten called for the foul. That's her first. Cammy Shields. Cammy Shields back to the free throw line for Southern Aroostook. Cammy a senior, Maddie Shields a senior, Emily Landry a senior. But those are the three seniors in the Southern Aroostook team, so that means We've got more players coming back next year. First shot off the back rim, no good. But those are some big time big seniors. Names. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They've done a lot tonight to give them this nine, 10 point lead. Second shot's good. Cami Shields, one of two from the free throw line. It's a 10 point ball game. Hartwell off on the baseline. Now down the lane, Hill, the runner, can't get it to go. Rebound, Clark takes it down. And Clark fouled by Anderson. She's another one that's done some little things for yeah. them. She just, she understands movement inside. She's made a couple great Southern passes, rebound, nice rebounds. Anderson, personal foul, number three. It's her third, and I think we're gonna have to have a stoppage. There might Second be some blood on the floor. We saw a Anderson's lot of this during the Northern Main Tournament in Bangor with the, I think the new floor this year with the finish, it made so when you Slid along there, so <laughs> a lot of scun up knees. But there is uh, blood on the floor, it looks like, as the officials looking for it right now. Yeah, I think Brianna Mills just went back to the locker room, and I'm not sure if they can. They're trying to deal with her bloody nose, and it's not stopping, it looks like. So hopefully they can figure that out with only three minutes left. But, you know, this for Valley, this is actually good for them. You know, they can take time be able to talk about what they're going to do going forward, give time for Mills to hopefully you know, stop that bleeding in the locker room and get her back out in the meantime. Some of the tournament officials cleaning up the blood on the floor. Why wouldn't we have another stoppage in play? In I know. Season, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We had one back in the first half when we had to replace an official. The scoreboard was uh, wonky at the right beginning of the, the game. game. We had the PA that wasn't working to start the game as well. Hey, do you know a high school basketball fan who is out of state or even out of the country? Let them know that they can watch all the state basketball championship games for free on our website. Live and on demand, all 10 games can be seen for free anywhere around the world. Just tell them to head to mainpublic.org slash basketball. You can check it out. So you wonder right now with three minutes left for Southern Aroostook, you know, what are they discussing? You know, they're, gonna, they're up 10. Um, you know, you hope that they still continue to play that their pace of basketball, right? With three minutes left, a 10-point lead isn't that much. So you still want to be able to play, and you want to be smart about the shots you're taking. But you don't want to slow this tempo down. This is what got them to this, to this moment. Got to take a look at some of the highlights from this second half. It was a three-point lead for Valley coming out of the locker room. Southern saw, the, saw the work she did before yes. that to make space for that offensive board. Good three-pointer by Shields. You know, you've hit it. Like, Anderson's had a tremendous second half. Every shot you saw go up, she's trying to create space for herself to rebound. She's done a great job. Off on the baseline, Bigelow for the Valley Cavaliers. Double oh, pass nice inside. Pass. Hartwell with a miss. Rebound comes away to Shields. And the ball will get tied up. Possession arrow is going to stay with Valley. So some of the stuff that happened to Southern Roostick in the first half is misses, happening now, right? Yeah, I mean, Valley. that's a great, great pass. Good look. Didn't fall. But uh, Riley, uh, was it? Riley Clark made that pass. It was a great look. This is Bigelow. Out of Clark. Baseline. Pull up. Pop. Big Clark in the bucket, her second basket here of the 
just making, you know, sprinkling a little bit here and there, some moments of big plays for her. Nice job pressuring out on the post, I mean, out on the perimeter. Ooh. It's a tough screen. Shields with it up top, 227 to play. Off to Landry, pass inside Anderson, the catch off the glass. Oh. Nice job being patient in that flex offense. Hartwell has it for the Cavaliers, but they need points and they need him in a hurry now. Hartwell tries three, off the back rim, no good. Rebound comes away to Landry. Landry feeds it up ahead to Shields, and not really in a huge hurry. Warriors lead it 52 to 42. Right back into that flex offense. And is up top, a pushing foul goes against Clark. That's a 15 foul, so get him on the line. line. Rally foul, mentioned before, all the people behind the scenes doing great work. I want to mention the engineering team of Steve Toothaker and Matt Bryant from the New England School of Communications helping out this broadcast today as well. So really, you, uh, you see us on camera, you maybe hear our voices, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes making these broadcasts oh, possible. We don't even know <laughs> how many people are doing it. We show up, put a headset on, and go I home. I know, right. Some of us look good doing it, not me. <laughs> First free throw by Anderson is good. Is that a tremendous second second half? And the second shot around the rim and off, no good. Rebound taken off by Valley. Cavaliers up by 11. There's a three-point shot off the back rim, no good. And Anderson there for the board. Yeah. Hearing her name off. Oh. Landry. Tough foul, foul but you know, at, at this point, you're gonna you need to get steals. You need to stop the clock. So. Not a bad one. A minute 41 to go. Final score from Portland in the Class A girls game. You'll be happy with this one. Tony with a win. No way. Uh, this, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. It was tight oh. wrong. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. I <laughs> Brunswick beats Tony 54 to 30. I'm sorry. I was reading it backwards. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to Brunswick. <laughs> no, I mean that. Brunswick's had such a great program. They're very strong, and uh, but Coney's had a tremendous run. I don't think anybody thought Coney was going to get there, so great run to them. Congratulations, Brunswick. 54-30, Brunswick with a win, and I believe that's their first uh, state goal ball yeah. in their history. Yeah, but they were there last year yep. against Lawrence, so kudos to them, but very proud of what Coney's done. All knocked away and stolen, taken out by Southern Aroostooks, and the Warriors up by 12. Shields. Really been a tale of two halves. Yeah, or even like mid second yes. quarter, right? Yep. They just. That's we felt things. like they had that break. We came back from the break. Valley started making even more of a run, and then it started to shift. And I, I really think when Southern Aroostooks decided, we're going to shoot with confidence. Like, stop questioning your shots. Shoot the ball with confidence, and it then opened it up. That third period where they really started hitting those threes, then it just you could it just gave the confidence for them to attack, to pass, to you could just see a different team when they were playing. Don't forget, Northwest Cliff Urquhart talking it over with his club, telling him basically at this point we're up by 12, a minute 18 to go, and unless it's a layup, you just go take a foul. Right, right. Work the ball around and make some free throws. It's, this Warrior team's been there, done that. They've won the last two state championships. They're going to get their third in a row. Um, you know, you look at Valley, it, the, ex, the, the experience that they're gaining from this, they're returning all, a lot of these kids, right? They're all going to come back next year to be able to fight for this again, but um, they've definitely gained a lot out of this game. The minute 15, down 12, it's, that's, that's a hard task right now for them. This is Shields. Maddie Shields, one of the seniors. Allie Shields coming back, just a sophomore. Cammy Shields now with it up top. And she's fouled with 1.01 to go. So Cammy Shields heading to the free throw line for a couple. Mention again the seniors for Southern Aroostook. You have Cammy Shields, Maddie Shields, and Emily Landry. Those are the three seniors for yeah. Coach Urquhart. And we've heard their names quite a few times tonight. They've done such a great job for their team. They've stayed composed. Valley, though, heavy underclass. Yeah. There's only two seniors on their club. So. Two of two at the line. So 
Addie Shields makes two. Three-point shot, that one no good. Rebound pulled off by Cami Shields. Out of 50 seconds to go, it's up to a 14-point game. And the foul, Cami Shields goes back to the line. But again, if you just look at the score, which a lot of people just do, you're gonna say, yeah, oh. It wasn't a competitive game. But it was. And it was, the whole time. Um, and it just, I think Valley's done such a good job, and they just, they came out firing. And But Southern Roostic, as good teams do, they settle in and they do what they need to to come out with a win. And she's a big reason right now. On that line, Cami Shields has had a tremendous game and is led as a senior. Two of two at the line. 16-point ball game, 45 seconds to go. So stretching it out from the free throw line, the Warriors are. Bigelow. Pass up top as this goes to Hartwell for three, no good. Clark tries to pull down the rebound, goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Valley High School. Following this one, we'll have the awarding of the runner-up plaque and the state championship gold ball, which is out on the table right now at the Augusta Civic Center. In the corner, three-pointer miss. Rebound taken down by Landry. Landry up into the front court for the Warriors. Let's see, they're just trying to run the clock out right now. Fans are starting to celebrate. They understand what this moment is. They understand it very well <laughs> for their past experience. Third time in a row, Shields with it. Down to six seconds and a foul, so. The Cavaliers won't let them ride it out here that easily. As Shields will have a chance for two more high school points here. Yeah, I think that's a competitive nature right there. Of, uh, oh, we don't want you celebrating <laughs> this early, so let's quiet this down. <laughs> With the free throw line, Cami Shields for two. First one's good. Great free throw shooter. And the second shot's good, so two of two. That'll cap off her high school career. That's a nice way to finish, huh? 18-point lead, and it will turn out to be an 18-point win because for the third year in a row, the girls in purple take home the championship. Just what a great effort all around by Southern Aroostook in just a tremendous second half. Just a tremendous second half. They trailed 24-21 going to the locker room. But remember, it was Cami Shields that hit a three-pointer right out of the gate to tie it. And then we kind of went back and I say back and forth. They get a lead. Valley would cut it back, but yeah, never got they the lead back. Get it back. Yeah. It's and just big play after big play. Shields hitting a big shots down the stretch, foul shots. We've seen three-point clutch three-point shots by Southern Aroostook. But this is nothing Valley needs to hang their heads with because this Cavalier team is going to be oh. back. Did, they did a great job, and they came out firing. We've got a lot of good players that gave a lot of minutes that are coming back next year, so. Well, both teams were definitely fun to watch. So the Valley High Cavaliers, unfortunately for them, they suffer their only loss of the season in the state championship game. And both teams will finish with identical records, 21 and one. Uh, yeah. So 42 and two when you combine the uh, two clubs is Coach Hartwell and Coach Urquhart, talk it over. Both guys that have been through the battles, they know the deal. As the Warriors will take down the Nets in just a moment. It's a little bit different in Augusta. In Bangor, you just rip a cord oh. and you pull it down. This is my favorite. This is no. where you cut it down with scissors. I love this. You know, if you're a player, it's not as fun when it takes two seconds <laughs> and one kid does it, right? But when you get to go up and take your time and you, they're all going to get a piece, they all take it home. Um, and then, then the, this moment, right? Parents get to take pictures and the kids are going to have their moment up at there cutting down the nets. That's what you dream of, not the let's rip it once. One kid gets to swirl and then we're done. So I, as, a, as a former player and a coach, I love this for players. I love that they get this moment to celebrate. I'm just paranoid with kids with, well, I'm paranoid with adults with scissors, but <laughs> <laughs> kids with scissors. <laughs> uh, as the net's starting to be cut down here at the Augusta Civic Center, the Southern Aroostook Warriors with a win 60 to 42 over the Valley High Cavaliers. Like as you see, uh, Allie Shields right now up on the ladder. And they're 
directing them is which one to cut. That's Emily Landry twirls it around after cutting the net down. Oh, she's working on it. We got another one. We're going to have another one come here in a here second. It here it is. You got to twirl it. Oh, there we go. Okay. The sister is up <laughs> on the uh, ladder. Oh, what a fun moment. That's going to be a happy household. For the third year in a row, Southern Aroostook, the Class D champions. It's the seventh gold ball for the uh, girls in school history, 92, 95, 118, and 19. The lone loss they've had along this run was in 2020, and they lost in the state final that year. Jeez. So They have dominated, dominated Class D. It's been the Southern Aroostook, it uh, seems like the Southern Aroostook Invitational yep. over the last yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Uh, Valley gave them a good run today. Again, had a lead, had a 14-point first half lead. And um, you could always just feel like Southern Aroostook, if they could start hitting their shots, they were going to get back in, and right, they did that in the second right, half. Yeah. And they were getting good shots in the beginning and good rebounds, but they just, it finally clicked, and they went all the way. 60-42 to 42 the final. The Southern Aroostook Warriors with the win over the Valley High Cavaliers. We're going to send it over to the table right now and get the awarding of the runner-up trophy as well as the individual awards and, of course, the gold ball presentation as well. So we'll send it over to the floor and get those presentations right now. On the floor, you have represented yourselves, your communities, and Maine basketball well. For the seniors on both teams, thank you. Thank you for all your leadership throughout your high school basketball careers. We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Representing the Maine Principals Association are Sherry St. Pierre, retired athletic administrator, Seacoast Christian School, and Ryan Wilkins, Principal Hartford Summer Elementary School. And representing Ware Butler Building Supply is Jason Simpson, Regional Operations Manager. To begin the award presentation, I would ask head coach Gordon Hartwell of the Valley High School Cavaliers and his assistant coach, Crystal Wallace, to come forward and assist with a presentation of the award. Beginning with the managers for a rally, freshman Isabella Clark. Senior Kelsey Nichols. Senior Kaylee Cates. Senior Chandler Poole. Personnel, eighth grader, Raven Fong. Eighth grader, Miranda Bean. Eighth grader, Julia Hill. Eighth grader, Ayanna Hartwell. Staples. Ninth grader Daisy Wright. Ninth grader Brianna Mills. Tenth grader Kirsten Middleton. Tenth grader Riley Clark. Junior Captain Madeline Hill. Senior Captain Kara Bigelow. And Senior Captain Serrata Wright.
on behalf of the Maine Principals Association and the Mayor of Butler Buildings and Property. It is our pleasure to present the Runners Up Plaque for the 2024 Maine Team Girls State Basketball Championship to the Valley High Cavaliers. Congratulations. On behalf of the Maine Principals Association and Ware Butler Building Supply, it is our pleasure to present the championship plaque for the 2024 Maine D Girls Basketball Championship to the Warriors of Southern Realistic Community School. Congratulations from all of us at the MPA and Ware Butler Building Supply. Enjoy celebrating your championship. Southern Aroostook, the Class D champions for the third straight year, and Karen, I'm sure that just never gets old, does it? No, I mean, they knew what to do. They they, they knew what cameras to go to, <laughs> where to pose. I think they've been here before. <laughs> they did really well posing for the camera oh. and getting the shots there. Southern Aroostook with the win. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll hear from the participants in this one. Final score, the Southern Aroostook Warriors 60, the Valley Cavaliers 42. Back after this, we got to Civic Center. 
production of High School Basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Five County Credit Union, serving members since 1956, committed to delivering convenience through technology, branch access, and local service. Sheridan Construction, a Maine company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Hammond Lumber Company, with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. The environment is just awesome. Great campus, small, close-knit community. Everyone's really welcoming. Everything feels very personal. You feel like you belong here. At the Augusta Civic Center, Toby Nelson, Karen Magnuson, getting set to go to Jim Baines here in just a moment with the victorious Southern Aroostook Warriors. 60 to 42 winners over the Valley Cavaliers. So the Warriors finished with a 21 and 1 record. The lone blemish was a loss to Class C Fort Kent. They ran through the Northern Maine tournament and they win it today. Again, the final score of 18 points, the deficit. You look at the final numbers and you think it wasn't a close game, but oh. the fact is for three and a half quarters it, it was. It was. They were very fun to watch, very competitive. Two teams that worked hard. Jim Baines on the floor right now with that gold ball and some victorious Warriors. Jim? You know, I just asked them, did this just get old? And they said, absolutely not. It's seventh gold ball in the history for Southern Aroostook, third straight. Congratulations, ladies. Uh, Maddie, um, talk about uh, what it means to you guys and the, the three seniors that you've been playing with the whole time. Uh, it means so much, and it was my last game. So we went out with a bang, and I couldn't be happier about it. All right. Kami, if they, someone would have told you, number one, you'd be down 10 points. And then you're going to score 28 in the state championship game. Would you have believed it? Uh, I mean, it just, I mean, yes and no. We knew they were in a great team, but, you know, and we had games like this this season, so we were ready for it. And the whole game, we were just like, come on, like, this is, we can do this. Like, like we're capable of it. We're a good team. Like, so yes and no, I guess. But I'm just so happy and proud and excited. And Emily, also, um, since you're one of the seniors here, just tell us about what it's been like with these two and uh, also seeing the uh, the younger ones come up. Oh, it's amazing. I've been playing with them since second grade, and they're always so proud of each other. We're always so proud of each other. And the younger girls, I think they'll be just fine next year. How great was Libby down low? <laughs> she was great. That's my baby cousin. There you go, bringing it here. Off yeah. Rebounding yeah. Minutes. yeah, it was not easy to get the ball to you in the early part of the game, and then you kind of found your groove there. I love the little touchdown pass in the third quarter there. I mean, is it, has it become easy to find uh, when you know they're down low like that? Um, yeah, I think we just have that chemistry, and we just know that, just have faith that they're going to catch it, and we can make passes like that. All right. And you guys were down 10 points. You're not used to being down at all. So what was that like um, coming out of that? Um, it was a little nerve-wracking, but we persevered, I think. Like I said, we're a team. We come back together, and and we worked our butts off to get back. Very good. Let's bring Allie in over here as well. All right. You got I saw you twirl that net as soon as you grabbed it. That must be a great feeling right there. Yes, definitely. It's the best feeling. What's it like having this kind of leadership around um, uh, to see and, and have uh, that uh, legacy at Southern Arrest? Oh, it's just amazing. I mean, we're all grateful for it, and we work for it. So it, it paid off, and it feels amazing. All right, very good. Cliff, come on in here. It's become a regular thing between us here, sir. Almost, almost an annual thing. It is. It's great to see you again, Jim. All right. <laughs> so tell us about you. Now, this team is not used to being down at all, let alone down 10 points. What's it like for a coach to, you know, get them out of that funk, and uh, especially with a team like this? Well, I mean, we just got to remain calm, right? I mean, we've got a lot of experience on this team, three yeah. seniors that have been there, and they've been down in their careers. All you know, right. they, when we've had some games, we've been down, and, and you know, it was just uh, – you know, like Cammy said, you know, just just keep going. We got this. We're going to win this. And, uh, you know, in the end, we uh, we played well. All right, very good. Cliff, congratulations. Ladies, bring it in. You know how this ends. Tell the camera what it's like to be state champ. Yeah, Southern Aroostook Warriors bring that gold ball back to Island Falls. Karen, this has been a, was a fun afternoon of basketball. Oh, it was great. It was a, a fun calling it and just seeing seeing the effort, right, and the happiness that they gained from those moments. Those sisters and cousins and everybody, the memories they're going to keep forever.
A good win here for the Southern Aroostook Warriors, 60-42 to 42 over Valley. That wraps up coverage of game number one, but coming up, we've got one more game for you. It's Valley and Bangor Christian Boys. It comes your way next on the stations of Maine Public Television.